On this video today, I'll be demonstrating the ABO blood typing system using simulated blood and simulated anti-serum from the Innovating Science Kit provided by Aldon Corporation. In this experiment, we'll be determining the presence or absence of various antigens on the surface of the patient's blood cells. The presence or absence of specific antigens will therefore determine the patient's blood type. For instance, should we observe a positive reaction in the blood when the anti-A serum is added, we can conclude that A antigens are present on the surface of the patient's blood cells. A positive reaction is characterized by clumping, which is formally known as agglutination, of the blood cell and antiserum mixture. Such agglutination occurs when antigens on the surface of the patient's blood cell interact and bind with free-floating antibodies in the serum. A negative reaction is characterized by the blood and antiserum mixture remaining in a fluid state in which no agglutination occurs. There are four main types of blood in the ABO blood typing system. Type A has A antigens present on the surface. Type B has B antigens present on the surface. Type AB has both A and B antigens present. And type O blood has neither A nor B antigens present. When fully considering a patient's blood type, we must also take into account that the surface of their cells may or may not also possess RH proteins. For instance, a person that is A positive possesses A antigens as well as RH antigens, whereas a person that is A negative possesses A antigens but does not possess RH antigens. When taking into account RH, in combination with the ABO system, we end up with a possible eight different blood types. A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative, AB positive, AB negative, O positive, and O negative. In this demonstration, we will review each one of the eight possible blood types. So you can see I'm adding three blood samples all from the same patient into each one of the wells. And then I'm going to go through with anti-sera A and uh, anti-sera B and anti-RH sera right now. We're going to take uh, toothpicks and mix them around and be very careful as to not cross-contaminate. So use fresh toothpicks for each sample. Um, you'll also want to wait about five minutes for agglutination to happen after, and then I'm going to bring it closer. So that is a negative, right? You can see the blood is still flowing freely, and we're going to shake that around. You can see that's clumping. And let me get a little closer. You can see it's agglutinating. And how about RH? That is still flowing just like A. So that is going to be B negative. So for each one of these blood samples, we're going to follow the same protocol as in the first one, we're going to add blood distinctly to each well, and then we're going to add the distinct anti-sera and mix with a fresh, non-cross-contaminated toothpick. 
and then wait five minutes and uh, then gently rock and move the well around to see if agglutination has happened or not. So from here we can see that we have agglutination in A, nothing in B, and agglutination in RH. So this patient is A positive. So by now you should be thoroughly familiar with the steps in this protocol. Um, if you're not, go ahead and go back in the video to the explanation portion and you'll get it. So in the interest of time with patients four through eight, I'm going to mix the samples and wait for five minutes, essentially off camera, and I'll cut the camera in when we're ready to do the interpretation. Also at this point in the video, you should be thoroughly familiar on how to read whether a sample is agglutinated or not. So I'm not gonna be telling you the answers from here on out. It's gonna be your job to figure it out and interpret the results correctly.